um, and I would have to wonder, and I believe that there is Hebrew tradition, and even in the Hittite tradition, that for a covenant or a contract to be legitimate, that um, it has to have, in some cases, now I'm not going to be dogmatic about this, but I do believe it's, to me, it seems like it's stating there that there is really two copies of the Ten Commandments. Um, you know, one copy, again, just like a contract uh, or a pact, which is really what a covenant is, is like a pact, an agreement between two parties. Usually, both parties would have a copy of that pact or that agreement. And this verse could very well be alluding to that. Now, I've done a lot of study on that verse and, and study in the um, surrounding scriptures and, and the history behind those scriptures. And there's really no way to say emphatically that that is the case. So, again, I'm not going to be dogmatic about it, but when you think about it, if you have two, two, tables, or two, yeah, two tables of commandments and each table has writing on both sides, that's four sides of the two tables, and which would approximately be about two and a half commandments per side, so it, it could very well be that that is the case, that it is Ten Commandments just written on through uh, all four sides of the two tables. I believe it very well could be the two copies, one copy for God and one copy for his children or the other party of the compact or the, or the covenant, uh, which to me seems to make more sense. But again, I, I, it's, it can't be supported, so I'm not dogmatic about it. But I will say this. There are other scriptures, and I'll give you an example here. Hebrew 9.23, or I'll start at 9.21. It says, Moreover, the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry he sprinkled in the like manner with the blood, according to the law. And, and then uh, the, the writer says, I may almost say all things are cleansed with the blood, and apart from the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin. Now we know that the blood of Jesus Christ is the blood of the new covenant. So let's keep that in mind and we'll continue here. It says, It was necessary, therefore, that the copies, this is uh, 9.23, Hebrews 9.23, it says, It was necessary, therefore, that the copies of the things in heaven should be cleansed with these. Now, the co it says, it was necessary, therefore, that the copies of the things in heaven. So what we need to recognize is that these things on earth are the copies, in other words, the tabernacle and all the furniture of the tabernacle and the, even the Ark of the Covenant and even the two tables of stone which are in the Ark of the Covenant. These are all copies of the original which are in heaven. And if we even read in the, the very next verse that says, and Christ entered into the holy place made with hands like in the pattern of the true. And then, now I'm just pausing there, it says like in the pattern of the true. Well, a pattern, a pattern is a, um, a copy of an original from which further copies can be made. And the very fact that it says like in the pattern to the true or of the true, it's referencing the true tabernacle from which the pattern is made, which is in heaven. And even, um, I'd have to go, let's see, yeah, okay, so let me finish this and then I'll jump back a little. It says, but, but into heaven itself God appeared to man, uh, God, excuse me, it says, uh, now to appear before the face of God for us. Uh, that was Hebrews 9.24. So let me jump back again with the idea of the pattern here. In Exodus 32.15 it says that, uh, it says, and Moses turned and went down from the mount with the, uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I already read that. Actually, I wanted to jump forward to Revelations. Revelation, and this is, again, goes to, lends to the idea and the belief here that the real true temple and the tabernacle of God is in heaven. It is not the one here on earth. It says, um, and I'll start with 11.18, it says, And the nations were wroth uh, with the wrath of God, and, and the time of the dead to be judged. And the time was given, and their reward to thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, the small and the great, and to destroy them that destroy the earth. And then I'll, I'll continue on. It says, And there was opened in the temple of God, that is in heaven, 
And there was seen in his temple the ark of his covenant. And there followed lightnings and voices and thunders and earthquake and a great hail. Now, I wanted to read, 11, I started with 11.18 for this purpose, because I wanted everyone to recognize that this verse is speaking about the end of time, about the very last days. It says, and the nations were wroth, and they came, and uh, it was time for the dead to be judged. I'm paraphrasing now. But, uh, and then it says, uh, to fear thy name, the small and the great, uh, to destroy the earth. So there's obvious reference here to the end of time, to the, to the judgment, the time of the second coming, and the time of, uh, as we would say, the day of the Lord. And um, so the point is, if at the end of time, the, the John sees the tabernacle in heaven opened, and he sees the Ark of the Covenant, keep in mind, now this is the original Ark of the Covenant from which the temple, or I'm sorry, for which the, the, the which is really the template for the the tabernacle on earth, or the sanctuary on earth, then we also know that in that Ark of the Covenant, which is in the true temple in heaven, is the Ten Commandments. Now, the, the significance is, of that is this. If anyone out there right now believes that any of the Ten Commandments, which we know cannot be changed, we know they are immutable, if anyone believes that the Sabbath day or any of the Ten Commandments have been done away with or abrogated, then you must admit and confess that Jesus is right now mediating on our behalf with his blood for, uh, for a law which has already been abrogated or been done away with. Now think about that. What is the logic behind that? How could the Lord be mediating with his blood for a law that has been done away with? It makes absolutely no sense, no logic at all. And so I wanted to point that out, Rick. I hope you, um, hope I didn't uh, throw you for a loop there. I know that's a little oh, no, bit actually, a little heavy. I, I know I read I, a lot into that, um, but it's absolutely true. So in other words, what you're saying I, is there, there's a, a tabernacle or, or a temple in heaven, right? That's what you're saying. There's basically a temple in heaven, and the, the Old Testament with... Uh, the the Hebrews was a copy of the true temple, which is in the heavenly sanctuary, you know, and and I think that's what you're trying to get at. Am I correct? Yes, absolutely. And um, go ahead. Did you want to add to that? Um, yeah, actually, I was I was going to add on on the statement because um, um, there's a lot of different individuals that claim that just the Sabbath itself has been done away with and I've been speaking with various various Protestants, Catholics and you know non believers about the Sabbath issue and I find it inter interesting that, you know, Protestants would claim, oh, you know, the 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 Sabbath is just a shadow and I would ask them, Well, isn't that incongruent with all the writings of your ministers? And they would they would say, What do you mean? And I would suggest, you know, go back and do the research. You know, before before Protestants actually came in, onto the scene, the Catholic Church basically in their own writings have stated, look, there is no commandment in the Scriptures from the whole Old Testament to the New Testament that proves Sunday as the first day of the week. We have quotes from the Congregationalists, Anglicans. As a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and read a quote. If I if I don't I don't want to take too much of your time, but I'll go sure. ahead and just no. read a quote from the uh, Anglican Church and also from the Congregationalist Church. It says this: the current notion that Christ and his apostles authoritatively substituted the first day for the seventh is absolutely without any authority in the New Testament. And this is Dr. Layman Abbott in the Christian Union, June 26, 1890. So already in the past we had individuals discussing the, the Sabbath issue, and in their own writings they state clearly the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. You know, not the Sabbath of the Jews, not the Sabbath dispensation, not the Sabbath eon, but the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. 